I brought up your new title, which entails a slightly broader universe of coverage, now encompassing Vidya. What is your opinion of the political controversy surrounding the sale of chips in China? Is that riskier now than it has ever been because of Trump's planned connection with the Chinese? Yes, I believe it's a negotiating chip since everyone understands that Musk and Trump are the only players in the game. Isn't that NVIDIA? Gen's NVIDIA will have additional negotiation leverage when it comes to chips flowing into China as a result of Godfather v. Gen's, and it's something that will eventually come to pass. The tariffs were visible to you. Although I believe it has had a limited effect on NVIDIA, we still think that this is all paving the way for a golden age of AI, not only for NVIDIA but for the entire industry. However, they are using it as a negotiating chip with Beijing. Finally, before I leave, NVIDIA, what's coming up next week? The profits, huh? What are our thoughts on this heading in, huh? Prepare the watch parties and grab the popcorn. This is going to be really amazing. In my opinion, the street continues to underestimate where numbers will go over the next year or two. They will probably fight this one. But in the end, a $4 trillion market cap is anticipated. We'll stop there. Welcome to Asterisk Fast Money Asterisk again. D shares of Taiwan Semiconductor dropped today after Reuters revealed that U.S. officials had ordered the chipmaker to halt exports of AI chips to China. The announcement follows last month's discovery of a Taiwan Semi product in a Huawei chipset. Other significant chipmakers also saw a decline today. To begin the week, NVIDIA, AMD, Broadcom, Intel, and Qualcomm all finished lower. You were looking at this, Dan? Indeed, we'd have been hearing this for a time. These chips have an illicit market and are making their way into Chinese gadgets. The most significant factor here, I suppose, is how far behind the United States, China, is in terms of designs and the like. It's really fascinating information, and this is being released at the moment. It has the potential to kind of ratchet up the kind of dialogue with China at a time when the new administration is also considering 60% tariffs across the board, that kind of thing. I know that the US government and Commerce Department, or whatever, have made similar declarations before. Therefore, this is one to watch carefully. Indeed, a portion of last week's profits were relinquished by the whole semiconductor industry. We have discussed the fact that it did. The S&P hasn't reached any new highs in a while. You had a sort of double top in June and July, which is really when it all started. Additionally, you may have a head and shoulders formation here if you're one of those individuals. NVIDIA has, in my opinion, hung tough like the new kids, and we've been kind of sideways. However, I do believe that you need to be keeping an eye on this leadership. We're going to need this again. And I don't think meme stocks can produce this level of leadership. I'm not sure if this is entirely about S17 news or if it's just the question of whether I has any genuine promise. It has had a tremendous run leading up to this, and we will see it when Vidya reports. It's accurate. The new president's rhetoric about Taiwan is intriguing. Since they would have to pay for their own defense. Taiwan will probably end up purchasing F-35s and Patriot missiles from the U.S. to demonstrate their willingness to cooperate, which will enrage the Chinese. This has been an existential threat to Taiwan Semi and possibly NVIDIA the entire time. So you start to think about how it will all work out. How about Semis? Well, NVIDIA was mentioned. You see, it's putting Apple at the top of the market capitalization ladder. Of course, it had an amazing run. But not all of the stocks in this market are NVIDIA. How do you evaluate the semifinals? This is the one instance when I firmly believe you have witnessed leadership truly fracturing or splitting. And this has been the case throughout the spring, summer, and fall. We are aware of the NVIDIA chart's excellence. We are aware of Broadcom's excellence. AM8 is where? LAN Research is where? Where is ASML? Samsung, where are you? What does leadership look like? It is, in my opinion, the fastest of those. Underneath, it is the weakest. Here, only a quarter of the SEMIS are above their 200-day moving average. For the following four to six weeks, SEMIS do provide some decent seasonality. If you had a bounce, I believe I would be more likely to fade it in the semifinals than to chase it. I questioned you about Berkshire selling Apple before, so now I'll ask you about NVIDIA's current status and its participation in the Dow, as well as your thoughts on it in light of your observations over the years.
Indeed, on some level, the Dow may have felt somewhat out of step with the current state of the economy due to the prior inclusion of Intel and the lack of a play on NVIDIA, which accounts for 7% of the S and P500. One could argue that it is simply clinging to a high momentum play after it has already made its biggest gains. I was just examining the market capitalization comparison between NVIDIA and Apple. Right now, it's neck and neck. NVIDIA will receive almost half of the net income and a third of the revenue in the upcoming year. It is evident that the stock is more costly, but its growth rate is significantly faster. First of all, just because a stock is listed on the Dow does not provide you a fresh incentive to purchase it in the near future. According to history, there is absolutely no reason to purchase. The amount of money indexed to the Dow is quite little. It's more about confirming its existing position in the new tech economy, which we already knew about in a way. Therefore, once more, I don't believe it's a sell the news story. Perhaps the Intel concession makes it a good buy, but right now, it appears like the Dow is more concerned with staying relevant. Okay, nice stuff. Let's check the Nvidia stock this morning. Piper Sandler rated the company as overweight with a price target of $175 and called it a top large cap choice, stating that it's a must-own due to the ramp-up of its Blackwell chip. Today's pricing is $148.07. Guys, you brought up a few of the hyperscalers. NVIDIA received some positive feedback. This Melius note is quite intriguing, and Piper makes it a top choice just goes to $185, writes Ben. Our excitement for Blackwell has increased even further, he says. Ben compares giving up on Apple after the iPhone 1 or 2 to giving up on video with Hopper, referring to the current cycle. David, they have updated figures on hyperscaler capital expenditures. They have the number 282. 282? 282 billion. For how long? Year after year, I guess, with Oracle, Amazon, and Meta included, it would be increasing 24% year over year. How it stacks up against some of the Morgan Stanley figures we received is unknown to me. I take it that was more than $100 billion. Yes, over I mean. Yes, there were $300 billion. Yes, exactly. Yes, I must verify the figures. However, there has been something intriguing that I've been attempting to concentrate on. Last week, there was a asterisk information asterisk story. Additionally, I listened to Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz's podcast. Although it was done before the election, it is unrelated to that. It concerned, or at least they brought up, the notion that the development of huge language models, especially at OpenAI, is, in a sense, glacially slowing down from model to model. The future flagship model, Orion, is also discussed in the asterisk information asterisk article. There, I suppose, it's the code name. Although it performed better than previous models, the quality improvement was far less pronounced than the difference between ChatGPT3 and ChatGPT4. Naturally, those are the final two models. On that podcast, Andreessen also made the same statement. It's kind of fascinating, so I'm simply marking it. Is their data running low? Why? Is it accurate? Is progress actually slowing down? Because if they're actually consuming as many or more CPUs, that wasn't anticipated. Therefore, it's not as if the problem is with the chip. It might just be something unclear. Certainly unclear to me, Carl. Or it might be a data-related problem. But if the trend abruptly halted, that would have significant consequences. I am aware of the other, and not to deviate too much from your point. Andreessen described America as an economic coiled spring in a recent tweet. 